Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're joining us from around the world. Welcome back to Web3 Warriors, where we discuss all things blockchain and Web3 in this uh, amazing new creator economy. Welcome to episode 23 and the starting of season two of Web3 Warriors, where we are excited to have Ice Weke here with us from Nigeria to talk about his Web3 journey and uh, some of the amazing surrealist art uh, that he creates. Welcome, Ice. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you, David. How are you doing? Very good, very good. I hope you're doing well. Um, so I just wanted to welcome everyone back to Web3 Warriors. We have been on a little bit of a hiatus, uh, about three weeks. I went out to NFT NYC, learned a lot, connected with a lot of people that I've been building with and, um, you know, kind of connecting through social media, essentially, and largely Clubhouse um, before NFT NYC. And it was really amazing to kind of meet in real life and see that that kind of blockchain Web3 ethos really does exist in real life and when these people are together we were really kind of able to create and connect and have some interesting uh, business opportunities that we are continuing to build um, on the DAO front with a couple of groups that I'm working with shout out to Storytime DAO and the Dream Conduit DAO um, that are really focused on well on one hand with the Dream Conduit onboarding and educating new people creators uh, into the NFT space um, and then on the Storytime DAO which is still very new we're trying to build out uh, it's really about just like emphasizing creation and um, stories on the blockchain and literature um, so those are some things we're looking forward to that came out of NFT NYC a lot of progress uh, so we continue to build but today uh, I really want to emphasize kind of the global impact of web3 which is a common kind of recurring theme on this podcast where we like to talk about just the fact that if one person in a different corner of the world who wouldn't have had access to sell their art and make an impact on their life and the, their families' lives, their communities' lives. If one person has benefited in that way from Web3 and blockchain um, and NFTs, then this is a great technology, right? And not only has one person benefited that way, but many thousands of people um, are benefiting all over the world uh, from Web3 technology and from blockchain and from being able to put their art onto the blockchain in this new economy, basically, and really just find... Um, collectors find community and find some assistance as well and collaborative um, support that just didn't exist prior to web3 and prior to blockchain uh, so that's what we focus on here at web3 warriors it's really about the creator economy it's about the fact that there is now this new avenue for creators that did not exist prior um, and when looking at web3 when looking at blockchain through that lens there's really no way to get you know sidetracked by the fear uncertainty and doubt or the FUD, as we call it in the space, um, because there's no downside to selling your work. You know, there's no downside to finding new collectors on the other side of the planet. Um, like I myself am a proud collector of Ice Waike <laughs> and his amazing uh, pieces that I have up here is his first collection um, as an example. Um, and, you know, just knowing that I've been able to support him and learn from him and really just be amazed by the level of um, amazing art that's coming out of his uh, shop specifically and really out of Nigeria more broadly and Western Africa even more broadly than that. Uh, we've had some other guests on the show. Uh, shout out to Zion. Um, we've had, uh, yeah, just amazing guests from all over. Kofi from Ghana. Um, so it's really exciting to see, you know, the potential, especially for Africa, but really for any developing nations as well. Well, um, to really lean into this technology and realize that it's kind of borderless. It's really like, um, it's really innovative. And most importantly, it's just getting started. So when you look at the video game industry, which is a comparison I always like to make because I think they are very similar in a whole lot of ways. Um, but video games, you know, it started out very niche. People thought it was just kind of crazy for nerdy kids to enjoy. Um, and I think that NFTs and blockchain are kind of starting out in a very similar kind of way, whereas like only people who are really taking the time to like understand the technology and the benefits of blockchain, the benefits of transparent, accountable, peer-to-peer -peer transactions um, internationally, you know, kind of borderless transactions. Um, those who take that time to understand it easily you know kind of fall into it and and, and want to see it grow and succeed uh, but a lot of other people are getting into the space just with the hope of making a lot of money um, and that's okay you know 
to each their own. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be talking about creativity here, and I really am looking forward to uh, having this discussion with Ice. I know it's pretty late for you in Nigeria, where you're joining us from, so I want to <laughs> respect your time. <laughs> uh, but thank you, Ice, so much for joining us. Uh, maybe I'll just start by asking, you know, what brings you to Web3? I know you've got some awesome NFT collections. Um, I believe you were an artist prior to NFTs and Web3, so I'd love to just get a little bit of uh, background on uh, how did you, you know, start creating NFTs and kind of learn about the blockchain and welcome. Yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, how did I get into the blockchain? Okay. I, um, I had a friend that she, she called me up one afternoon and told me, Oh, ice, please. I, I, I desperately need to dance salsa. And I was <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I was like, where are you? Cause I was at home. And she was like, where are you? So she's somewhere near the location. They are shooting a film because she's an actress. I was like, okay. Um, I haven't seen you for a while. So let me use that same opportunity to see you get to gist with you and then probably dance with you. So I went straight to the place, got there. Um, she came out, took me to a room. I think they were shooting a school, a, um, a film, a film in a school. So we went to the, the basketball <laughs> course. I came with my small, small speaker, put on the, the, the music. And we started dancing. So when we were done dancing, she told me, oh, um, there's this stuff that she's been trying to get into. She doesn't know why it's not working. Um, that maybe it's an iPhone thing because she knows I love Apple products. And I was like, okay, what's it called? She said Clubhouse. I said, okay. <laughs> so, so she showed me the app. So I downloaded the app that if, when she, while she was talking. And I tried doing the registration and immediately I got in. She was like, what is wrong? What is happening? That she's been trying to get in for the past few weeks. <laughs> and she hasn't been able to get in. So I got in and later that evening, I was like, what's this clubhouse about? I got into the clubhouse. I was seeing different rooms. People were talking and talking about this, talking about that. I saw a couple of art room and this was happening. Um, this was happening day before, um, 20, 2020. Yes. That was when it was, this was, this conversation was happening. And I was like, okay, no problem. Um, and then the the people sales happened i was hearing about the sales the nft i went online to check about the nft and i was like this is interesting what's it about because i've been following people for over the past 13 years oh wow and 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 he he might never know this but <laughs> he made me go into made me go into cinema 4d and, and animation because i saw his works as, as way back as um, when Cinema 4D, Maxon Cinema 4D was on, um, the version was R11.5. Now it's R25 or R26. Well, R11.5, that was when I came across people's work. They were like, who is this guy? Wow. And I and I was like, okay, he's using Cinema 4D. I downloaded Cinema 4D. I said I use it. But I, there, were, there wasn't much tutorial to study with, but I came across um, Grayscale Gorilla, Gorilla Nick Campbell. So I started following his tutorials to get used to it. I, occasionally I'll go to um, I'll go to people's page. So when the people sales happened, definitely it was on the <laughs> top top of my notification. I was like, what? No okay, doubt. I was like, okay, I need to know about this NFT. So I went back to the clubhouse because I wasn't I think the room I came into in Clubhouse, they were talking about stuff that was not making sense. People were just gisting, um, sharing funds and, oh, let's go to this party, let's go to that party. We're like, okay, this is another distraction. So when I heard about NFT and Clubhouse, so I went back to, and I started searching for every room that had Clubhouse. I had them NFT. And that was what brought me in there. And because of the style of art that I do, which is very different, um, I struggle with, I struggle with connecting I tried, I had a problem with people connecting with my art because I was a bit more surrealistic in, in my approach, in my paintings. I like painting something that is in my mind because I believe that back in school, I was told that art is the self-expression of the inner mind. So whatever I feel inside of me, if I go to my canvas, if I could express it, that is art. Um, so in, back then in school, a whole lot of students were all around me. They paint the normal th thing. They paint the street scenes. They paint... The yellow cabs, because in Lagos we have yellow cabs. They paint the buildings, they paint the forest, they paint the river, they paint the canals. But in my head, I see 
I, sometimes I see a, a fish walking to the market. Sometimes I see um, people dancing in the cloud and then they don't have wings, but they're just dancing there. But So when I tell my lecturers, they tell me that something is wrong with me. When I tell my schoolmates, my classmates, they tell me that that is not, is not art. So it, I struggled <laughs> and I struggled until I got, um, I got into, I met Salvador Dali's art and Jim Warren. So that helped me stand strong on what I believed and I kept painting even though people didn't accept it. So that was what brought me into the NFC space. So because I saw people that think like I think, creating arts like what, what I would want to create. Right. So that was the first part, the person that brought me into the NFC space. That's amazing. So outside of the box expression, which you do find a lot of in the NFT space for sure. Um, and you're saying Salvador yeah. Dali, and you've been following Beeple for 13 years. So you were definitely one of those people who was kind of looking at the digital art space, was already, you know, following the trends. And were you creating digital art on Instagram already as well? Like, had you been doing that prior? And look, because I couldn't get more, there was no place for me to go to like an animation school mm. here in, in, in Nigeria. What I ended up doing with my cinema 40 was I, I go I went more into set designing. So I started designing more of sets for productions, for musicals. And so I could design render it and set, give the design to my client that is into um, music concerts and all of that. So I would probably do a bit of a tutorial with grayscale, but my system couldn't carry the render. So I easily get for oh, trying no. to render yeah. <laughs> maybe eight and second. I'm like, God, this this, this is not gonna work. Uh, technology so, hurdles. But towards, right? towards, yeah. I was just saying technology hurdles, right? It's like when your system can't handle yes. the blender. And, yeah. Dig it, but, but I I some somehow I knew that um the the the, the next human frontier is digital is tech. I knew that and. So I kept making sure that I was just in, I, 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 constantly, I constantly knew what was happening. If something comes up new, I definitely will know about it because I'm always checking the internet. I'm, it, probably a day that I, I don't go to the web, probably I am not where there is Wi-Fi. So it, <laughs> yeah, trying to stay tapped in, right? So, so getting to, uh, what was the question was um, how I connected into, um, yeah, into Web3, into yeah. NFTs. Um, and I liked how you talked about Salvador Dali, but also um, being influenced by Beeple, and which are two fairly different artists, you know, but it's clear that you're an yeah. artist You're an artist through and through before any NFTs and any of that. You weren't trying to just jump on a trend or anything. No, I, I know that there are some. I hope people they don't get upset with me. Um, I think I've come I've come across some that uh, came into the NFT because of the oh people are selling our works. Um, for me, my journey into the Web three space is a journey that I know it's still the end of time. Um, for me, I see a space whereby you can meet different people, communicate with them through your art, get them to see, and the first time actually get to talk with people about what inspired you, about what you created. Um, and that is for me is more far more rewarding than probably selling out the work because you might sell off you might get to sell everything and people might not get to know the idea behind it so for me the idea and the story for me telling the, the collector or the my fellow um community friends oh this is the idea behind this is far more priceless because that was the, is the idea that drove me to the workstation to create those pieces over and over um, working in the night, early hours of the morning, writing down sketches, thinking about it even in a board meeting, or running to the to, to the canvas to paint it. Those those are the things that kept pushing me into that space. So getting to share it in the NFT space, getting to share it in the digital space, for any and everybody to see it and connect with the story. For me, it's like it's like heaven on earth. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, that's why we have you here. And I have very similar sentiments, although I personally am not a traditional artist. Um, you know, I'm trying to 
NFTs have definitely influenced me to lean more into my AV. You know, I do have some photography chops, videography stuff. Obviously, I'm here building a podcast about Web3. So I'm definitely feeling inspired by you and other artists that are doing uh, just building amazing works like that. And I like how you said two very important things. So first of all, you're here for life. So you see this as a long term, you know, you're going to be a creator, you're going to be an artist, you're going to be minting pieces on the blockchain for the foreseeable future forever. so that, forever there we go that's exciting um because that's what people that's what collectors i know i can tell you as a collector <laughs> that's what we want to hear and it's just inspiring to know that like it's clearly you feel it in your bones you know um and then when you talked about the fact that the it's not even about the profits but the fact that you get that direct connection with people like again i'm able to have this interview with you right and have this conversation with you as a collector of yours and as a fan of your art um and there's been other creators that i've been able to speak to directly about their nfts whether or not i collect their piece right and it's that access and you don't realize how much the creator wants that access right like we as fans as collectors i think we assume like oh you know the creator's way up there and we're just his lowly fan his or her lowly fans down here you know but the creator wants to hear from their fans right and that's been a big issue i think with the traditional structure there's been like these walls put up between you and your collectors right so yeah, I'd love to yeah, hear a little bit yeah. more on that. Just um, what, how have NFTs kind of changed your approach to art and maybe even specifically in Nigeria, I don't know what it was like as an artist in Nigeria pre NFTs and now maybe post NFTs, if you want to speak to that a bit. Pre NFTs. Okay. I, I can literally tell you that I walked into lots of galleries. Yeah. And they'll tell me, yo, I love your art, but it's, uh, it's not what we want. Um, why don't you just go and paint the street um, scene or the marketplace? Those are the arts that we are selling. I was like, but I should paint what I feel, not paint what you want to sell. If you if you want me to paint a market, then you should commission me to paint a market for you. Mm-hmm. Or if you, want to, if you want me to paint a busy street, you should commission me to paint a busy street. Not tell me that I should go and start painting busy streets so I can sell that work. How about yeah. if I don't sell it? Because you end up telling me that, oh, I, you don't connect with the style I use in painting it. And because I got um, inspired a lot by um, um, Salvador Dali and, and there's another guy, Jim, Jim Warren, um, his, his surrealistic art is just unreal. And Frank Frazetti, those two guys um, with the blend of, um, with a blend of Salvador, twisted my my brain upside down and just helped me on offload and onboard everything I was thinking of. So my art comes towards being realistic and then surrealistic. So a lot of people in my country don't do that. They do more of impressionist stuff. They do more of abstract thing, but I don't do abstract. Uh, I've done maybe one or two abstract, but I don't sit down to probably put cubes and shapes and this and that and give it a name. I don't do that. Some people are skilled in doing that. So the more I try pushing my art in, the, the galleries pushed me back. Like, no, we, we can't, we don't take your stuff. We don't like what your, your, your style can sell for us. Mm. And so I just kept all my works. Um, even um, JP that bought my um, a painting that I did, because I actually lost the fire to paint because of what galleries did to me in, in my country. Dang. I literally I, I literally stopped painting and focused more on dancing because I'm a professionally trained dancer. And, and dance and production are like maybe this art. And literally some art, art owners will tell me, do you know what? Maybe art painting is not your thing. Just focus on this dance is very good. You're good at the dance. You're good at the set stuff. I'm just, I, I'm just so, looking at your amazing art while you're telling this story, and it's so unbelievable. <laughs> it's just like, okay, yeah, so I, I was like, so <laughs> when I look back at the art, I was like, this is too good yeah. for it to be a mistake for that I'm doing it. And, and because probably I'm, I'm, I'm good at other stuff, I'm like, no, no, just leave the art. Art is not your thing. But I can't sleep at night because sometimes when I see ideas that I need to paint, I can't go out and tell another person, please paint this stuff. The person can get it the way I get it. So I just, do you know what? Maybe this painting stuff, I had to pause it and start doing other things. Then I came into, um, then I, that was the, the period I met people. I was like, oh, wow, this guy is crazy with this stuff. Oh, and he's into a cause. I did a show in 2012 
And um, one of the founders of Vimeo was in Nigeria then. Wow. So he saw, so I told him about my show and every, what I want to do with it was a musical. He said, yeah, uh, well, can I see what anything you've done? I was like, what I have is my, my art. So I showed him, I was like, whoa, guy, this thing is amazing. <laughs> that means you already understand colors and you understand composition and everything. Do you know what? Go into animation. You need to go into animation. <laughs> so that was the first time somebody in this entire world <laughs> told me, dude, go into animation and 3D design and all of that. So I picked up my very, very dying Windows laptop, downloaded Cinema 4D and After Effects. Like it was so slow that when I click on render, I go to sleep. <laughs> and then when I wake up in the morning, I hope that the render is done. That's yeah. how slow, yeah. just a five seconds, simple, basic design. That's rough. So. I, so I just started focusing on the, the digital part. Then when the NFT space came in, I, I got, um, I felt for the first time a family that can literally understand the craziness in my head <laughs> that could appreciate the art and not tell me that, oh, your art is not art. Stop painting and do something else. And people, they could see that and were like, oh, wow, we, we love your traditional art. We hope you're not going to stop painting traditional stuff. And now that you're doing digital are like, no, the two of them for me, I want to keep the two of them because I sometimes I want to just go on a canvas and just splash colors on it. The, the feeling I get from it, I don't get it from the computer. The right. computer for me is just like, it's move things around, set up stuff, keyframe, texture and all of that. But on the canvas, it's like my first love and I can't let go of my first love. Because, so in the NFT space, I, I walked into a family. Um, and the family that is so open, they will tell you what you need to know. Uh, so it's, so I, I wasn't getting that <laughs> with <laughs> my normal self before the NFC space. So yeah, so it's the before feedback. Before NFC, it was good. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. Before right? NFC, I was basically backing up. Yeah, when you think about NFTs and you think about blockchain, it's about peer-to-peer, -peer, um, and you don't think about the peer-to-peer -peer communication, you know? People think about the peer-to-peer -peer transaction, but it's also just being able to hear directly from the community, um, being able to speak directly to the artist, um, especially after you collect their pieces. They're usually very appreciative. You hear directly from them. You even build yeah. a relationship with them. You know, um, it's super exciting. I do want to just I love how you talked about the the canvas versus the uh, digital art. And those are kind of the two styles you've got um, looking at your collections here on OpenSea. You got the Afro dance and music, and you got the Delilah Volume One collection. Um, now, Afro dance, I believe there's still some digital component, right? But you did you start out with all of the pieces on canvas? Um, I would love to get yeah. a little bit of description around that collection before we dive into the Delilah collection, which is really interesting as well. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, the the Afro dance, the Afro dance pieces were all. I started traditionally first, then took it onto my, my tablet and made a few other adjustments. So we tweaked a few things, added a few other things because um, the, I, I still wanted to have that feeling of um, freedom. I'm still trying to master painting, mm. painting digitally the way I paint on a canvas. Right. So the feeling of that canvas, the, the texture, the, 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 the way the color blends together for me is still priceless. And so I did all of most three quarter of almost all the works were all um, on the canvas. And That's then I took, uh, took a, pic a picture of them then into Procreate, because I use Procreate a lot whenever I'm painting. That's basically the, the, the software or the app that I'm more comfortable with <laughs> when it comes to painting digitally. No doubt. So I use Pro Procreate to do the final touches, the, the colors, the blends, and the smoothing and everything. I did a few other things on it, and that was how I finished the Afro dance, which was my first drop. But I wanted to come into the space dancing like, oh, this is uh, me. It's, it's I have yeah, it really shows like these pieces really resonate. Um, you know, um, I want to give a shout out to Sasha. Thanks for the comment. She said uh, in the beginning is beautiful. This piece where they're kind of dancing underwater. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Sasha. Yeah, that 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 painting, the, the, the story behind that painting is, is crazy. I that painting took me. Um, first of all, I did the painting 17 years ago. Wow. And I lost track of it. 
And then when I found it back, I had to I had to redo it. But while I was creating the work itself, I I spent hours studying, going to National Geographic Channel, studying on the water, reading up stuff about how it will look. Because I wanted it to be not too much submerged. You can still see the body, the movement, and all of that. But yet still, you see a difference before between being on the water boys on the water mm -hmm. and i took time to study the human anatomy because that's one thing that most most of my my artist friends here in nigeria they run away from because if you get if you get a uh, if you get the anatomy wrong everything yeah is wrong. it looks all messy right everything get the, gets messed up yes if you get the perspective wrong every other thing is wrong and i didn't want to i wanted to change or shift the perspective a little bit so i had to look as if you're looking from they are almost beneath your eye level so you're not looking straight at them mm -hmm. almost like you're looking down at them and the guy is still looking down at the lady and everything is still as before i i did a whole lot of calculation on this stuff for mm -hmm. and when i saw the piece at the end i was like oh wow i, I i'm proud of it <laughs> you should be man it's fascinating especially the way that the bubbles come out as if they're actually like keeping themselves down underwater you know <laughs> like exhaling and yeah. dancing and then you got the whales in there it's it's really fascinating um and yeah when you talk about dance coming from dance and they definitely show like the movement in this one uh in the beginning is beautiful uh i really love of course the one i'm partial to what is happening um which you have in your own language there um, yeah. i really love that piece <laughs> and i I just thought the movement in this piece, especially in their hair, like the way their afros kind of swaying, you know, they're drumming, they got the one dancer. It's just fascinating. So I'm, I'm really curious about just your creative process and how did like being a dancer allow you to maybe show that movement in ways that maybe other artists would have a difficult time doing um, just a little bit more on, on those kind of connections uh, with your artistic process. I'd love to hear. Yeah, I think the, the dance part, I, I literally, people tell me, I was, we had a video shoot yesterday into this morning and, and a friend of mine had to call my attention, but like, stop dancing. And <laughs> I noticed that I was actually walking, walking from one part of the set to the other part and I was dancing and I wasn't the one being filmed, but I was just walking and I found myself dancing and she was like, every time you're always dancing. <laughs> and she was like, that's dancing something. I can literally dance from my doorstep to the car or, or my or my doorstep to the kitchen. So it's like it's like a it's like a part of me. And so when I want to probably do a painting, because I'm planning on dropping a, a new set of dance series, which I title, which the title is When We When We Dance. Nice. And there's a whole lot of when I say that to myself, there's a whole lot of feeling and expression that bubbles in my head. I literally see is like I see skirts floating in the air. I see movement because I because of during my training as a dancer, uh, I fell in love with flamenco. Flamenco ladies, when they are tapping, their expression, I can spend the entire day staring at the face wow. of the lady and the guys as they're clapping and the expression on the face has this, they are somewhere else um, transported to a new world. So it, for me, life, dance is life. The, the movement, everything about it is life. It breeds life. And so I try as much as, as possible. Each time I probably want to do a, a dance piece or a painting or whatever is digitally or traditional, I try to, like, I can get some of my dancers or like, dance, let me see you move. Let me see. I want to capture. I want to see something. Sometimes I see an image in my head that is burned into my head. And I just want to capture it so I I can spend hours and days studying on the movement. How to when you see it, I don't art because it's meant to be alive. I want my collectors to have my art, and when they look at it, they feel that it's moving. I don't want it. To, I don't want them to feel oh, it's a it's a it's a still picture captured at the at the, at the particular moment. Right. No. Even though it is a moment, you almost feel the movement. You almost feel the dance and the rhythm. You almost feel that you're pulled into that space. That so definitely comes through. Um, and so, like this would have been done on canvas, right? So, like this, what is happening? Are, were were all of these Afro dance collections kind of something you pulled from your archive and then just added a little bit of digital to? Um, 
Yeah, yeah. The, um, yes. Um, I have, um, I had um, the, the, in the beginning, I did a digital, the digital version, but, uh, which is almost the same, but now it wasn't underwater. Um, it was um, in outer space. So I call it Afro Galactica. Oh, nice. Because they're all, all in outer space dancing. But in the beginning, it was in underwater. So most of this one, I pulled out of my archives and pushed a bit of, added a few expressions to it um, digitally before bringing it into the NFT space. Nice. And you got that Afro Galactica vibe there too. Man. I, I love these pieces. I really do like the traditional art pieces. Um, I could ask you about them all day, but we'll hop over to your other collection because I definitely want to hear a little bit of the inspiration um, oh, behind Delilah. That. Yeah, Delilah. <laughs> Um, it's a very strong <laughs> archetype, as anyone who's familiar with the story of Samson and Delilah <laughs> and the power of uh, a beautiful woman to potentially, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so I'd love to hear your story about it. I just love the archetype. I love the art that you got. Um, and you've also been very generous uh, with your NFTs. And I would love to hear, you know, maybe your thoughts behind why you've done a lot of giveaways, a lot of um, just reaching out to the community. I am a very proud owner of uh, D1, I believe it is. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and you got all these really amazing pieces of different Delilahs with different vibe, you know, different skin tone, different hair colors, different color scheme. Just really fascinating. Um, so please, just a little bit of the backstory behind Delilah. And, and uh, yeah, what's what's your new collection all about? Yeah, okay, my new collection, I think it started the idea of the journey, which I never knew was a journey, started 25 years ago. Um, walking into my, my here, we call it secondary school, I think it's high school, mm -hmm. high school in America. So in yeah. my secondary school, I, I saw a wall, a graffiti wall design with a write-up. And the write-up says, um, beautiful is nice to look at, but it has caused the fall of many men. And I was very young then. I didn't know what it meant, but I, I loved it. It caught my attention. So I wrote it down on my book. So my first page of my book had that on it. My dad comes to pick me home, to take me home. Say, well, let me see what you did in school today. Opens through my book and sees that. I'm like, son, who wrote this? And he had this worried, this fear, this surprise look all mixed together in the question. <laughs> but like, I saw it on the wall and I wrote it down. Or like, and you wrote it down. You say, yes. Then why did you write that? Like, I don't know. So, but that sort of <laughs> stuck, stuck for me. 25 years ago, I'm still, those words and the write-up is still as clear as noonday in my head. Wow. And and I and I, I think I came across a, a, a story, um, not as an image about I'm not about story about Samuel and Delilah. It's in the um, the Jewish um, story, um, but I came across an image about Samson and Delilah. Were like, Ooh. and that sort of pulled me back to 20, 25 years back, and then I started recounting the different places and the different people I've met in life that I I probably called loving in the wrong places. And I found out that is everybody's is everybody's story. Every man and every woman they've wrong they've loved in the wrong places. Mm -hmm. um, and the the crazy part of it is that we are creatures created to love, and because we are created to love, we are constantly looking and searching for people to love and to love us back. Because it completes us in a way when we, when we feel love back. And sometimes, most times, it can be we can be so desperate that we don't care if we're not even being loved back, but we just want to just keep loving, even though it it starts hurting us. But we don't want to hear it. We just want to keep loving the person, or loving that thing, or loving that job. But it keeps taking, and taking and taking from you. But you want to just keep loving because you're afraid of stopping to love. Because if you feel that if you stop loving, you might not be loved again because maybe there is no love at home so even so i had to do a study on um samson which is a very powerful guy in the in the bible that um the the jewish story says that he's not meant to cut his hair um because the priest in the jewish community um a sign of a priest you're not meant to cut your hair so when you cut your hair that means you're no longer a priest similar to the way um the chinese the monks and the the ninjas they, they don't like if you cutting cutting off the hair or that ponytail is like a dishonor so the the, the beliefs the belief is that he, you are anointed to be a priest and you're not meant to cut your hair so the power that you that, that you're going to operate from is because of your hair so he can he he can kill thousands of soldiers 
and all of that. And they keep wondering where is this power from? Because, because so the idea is that if he if he's as buff or big as Adolf Schwarzenegger, they can probably say hey, the, the power is in the muscle. <laughs> but I guess Samson was a, a lean guy, no muscle, no nothing, but he could take down soldiers in a you know you know twinkle of an eye. So they had to send in a lady to find out where the power is. So the lady basically was there for one single last thing. She she has been paid already to get him to a space of opening up right. and to get his, the, the 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 secret to his power. But now Samson, on the other hand, was looking for somebody to love him. And the crazier part is, I because I keep asking myself when I listen to the story that you know that this place has a, a, a notice. Even if you don't see the notice, you know that you're going to um um uh, the the house of a a prostitute mm. so he had ha, her plan or her mission only is to bring you pleasure not to love you mm. but he still chose despite all of that to still fall in love there so it reminds me of how we fall in love in the wrongest of right. places ignore the signs us. right ignore the red flags <laughs> yes again so the red flags are clear but he kept staying there even when she kept asking what is it what is it what is it and she kept trying everything you tell her and yet you you didn't see enough red flags to run <laughs> <laughs> like so it might be sometimes it sounds crazy that you should have left immediately but so when i started applying it to my own life mm. and stories that i've had between a guy or a lady that is in a space whereby something is hurting her but she she doesn't have the strength to leave because she's somehow so connected or committed to that thing that pulling out is hard. So she needs some, like maybe like a, like something crazy to happen to pull her out of that space or something crazy to happen to the guy to pull him out of that space. So I had to pro, sort of like rubbing, loving in the wrong places and, and he, he ends up cutting his hair and mm -hmm. the, the, the power uh, letting the letting Delilah cut her hair, letting Delilah cut his hair, right, and realizing that he yeah. was going to lose his power, but he was so smitten that he had still let her do it. Yeah, it's wild. Yes. It, it's a great archetype. There's yeah. a lot of lessons in there, and honestly, there's probably some lessons as far as red flags <laughs> that uh, a lot of people could learn from in the NFT space. You know, <laughs> exactly because you know, because and it's beyond and the because that's why I probably titled it volume um, volume one. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I'll get to get to finish the volume two, which it has to do with the Samson being on the other side. But it's both people. And the Delilah is not about a lady being a bad person, and the, the, the Samson is not about the guy being a bad person. It's about something that happens to both male and female. It's just choosing choosing where you love is very important. Choosing who you love, because love is a choice. It's a gift, so you need to choose wisely. Because yeah. um, and to to save yourself a lot of things. Because most time people say, "Oh, your friends will stab you in the back." No, your friends will not stab you in the back. It's the people that are behind you who will stab you in the back. Your friends will stab you in the heart because they're in front of you and your your guards are down. Mm -hmm. So they they have the proximity to stab you in the heart. So when you choose to make um somebody that is not your friend a friend, then they, they can have access to your heart to stab it. So that's the, the general idea of everything. So you see some of the arts has a lady hold. Oh. Holding lots of honor, um, honor of a man, honor of a woman. Um, and and the, the positions, the postures speaks basically all about um, everything that happens in that space when you are at the lowest level of your life. And you just want to just keep staying there. Sometimes it can probably be, oh, there is no love at home. Um, so you, you are looking for love somewhere else. So sometimes those love draws to the wrongest places or draws into an addiction or draws that's, into some crazy thing that we end up regretting. So, yeah, so true. that's the idea behind it's kind the of Delilah a, series. Yeah, it's kind of a universal truth. Um, you were mentioning the posing, the different poses and your, your uh, network cut out just a little bit. If you just want to reiterate that, because I noticed, yeah, it looks like in some poses, like the woman is just like straight up sitting right on the man and you got a few where he's got of in a submission pose kind of just at her legs yeah if you want to just speak to the yeah. different the different poses and then you've got the more um 
uh, the one-on-one like Delilah images of her with her scissors um, the different kind of archetypes different versions of Delilah um, but yeah just if you want to speak on the the posing because um, it definitely has a very kind of like man submits to woman but like you said it could be universal it's just like you know person submits to lover essentially right <laughs> yeah so I, I think I'll use my the favorite one my um, Delilah Noah I love that. Like noir, yeah. The contrast there is beautiful. Like, oh, yes. Yeah. So um, I wanted to use that to probably establish one thing. Um, I believe somewhere, somehow, there is still there was a liking, but not a loving, from Delilah to Samson. There is a liking, but not a loving. But Samson loved her. Mm. Um, Because while while I was doing the studies, they mentioned that Samson loved Delilah, but there was never a time mentioned that Delilah loved him. So the liking parts and holding the scissors, knowing the next thing she's about to do. And there was that moment, I believe there's a moment in time when you have a reflection of what you're about to do before you do it. Whether what you're about to do is crazy or not crazy. There's that moment in time when you were like, oh my God. Uh, I think I like this guy, but hey, I got to, a, a job is a job. <laughs> I got to get my job done because I have money I've collected. Right. So I, I try using that to capture that moment. Yeah, but you kind of see it before, almost. It's almost like she has a little bit of regret in her eyes, maybe. Yeah. So that's basically whenever she's laying her head on his head, it's like that very moment before the cutting starts. So when she's leaning up straight, the cutting, <laughs> she's like, I'm ready. Right. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And she's looking at the camera on some of these. It. Wow. That's beautiful. And then Delilah Blanc is a similar pose. Yeah. Yeah. These poses are really amazing, man. <laughs> um, and as far as the, the 3D um, software that you use to build these, um, would it have been cin- Cinema 4D or what are you looking at? I think I, I, for this one, I pushed more into, I used a bit of Cinema 4D and used more on um, DAS. Um, so I was switching between Cinema 4D and DAS, Cinema 4D and DAS, Cinema 4D and DAS. And so some of the texturing to I, because I work with um, Pixel, Megascan, and Bridge from Unreal Engine. So I, 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 so I wanted this texturing to be very, I, I wanted to go towards being as real as possible. Uh, I, I didn't want it to probably look animated. So I, I made sure I was working with the very best textures. Some of the textures were about 4K textures to make sure that, yeah, when you see it, you, you, it hits you that this is like real, this is me and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I was switching between that Sigma 4D and DAS, DAS, um, DAS 3D to get everything done. And DAS is just D-A-Z then, 3D? D-A-Z, yeah. Okay, yeah. I wasn't familiar with that and, one, so that's, um, that's a cool one to drop for our okay. listeners. And and I probably worked a bit more with Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo for me, it's it's another version of Photoshop. So it's it's user friendly, straightforward stuff. Same thing you can do in Photoshop. You can do in um, Affinity Photo. So hmm. I use Affinity Photo to do the final touch ups um, before um, minting it. Right, like different lighting and maybe a little like uh, focus and yeah yeah softening certain parts wow it's really amazing like the attention to detail definitely shows um so when you say you get like 4k level detail i guess you you solved your your technical problem right you got yourself a decent beast now (laughs) decent pc Uh, yes i have a workstation (laughs) right (laughs) awesome awesome um yeah. uh, I, I made sure i had one um was it 2019 i had so i just I, I need to get something like because if i'm going to do this i don't want any, anything delaying my art stuff so i got a very good one even though i want to still upgrade it but this is pretty good nice yeah yeah I, uh, I was getting into the video streaming and um kind of the metaverse side of things as well when I got this beast here <laughs> and um, it's definitely nice. been been pretty good you know but yeah it's worth investing especially if you are looking to use your computer to build um, creative pieces and and really uh, build in that way 
especially in the 3D side of things. Um, I am curious though, and I, I wanted to mention a really cool piece that I came across in the metaverse that you created um, that I'm gonna bring up briefly, but I'm curious, do you have any thoughts towards the metaverse? Um, do you have any kind of ambitions as far as maybe your own corner in the metaverse or showing your art um, out there? Yeah, um, I know I meant to, who, 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 was, who was telling me that again? Diverse. Diverse female beat maker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diverse told me that Ice, you need to hurry up and get into the the metaverse to build because I know I because I do um, a lot of modeling. Yeah, for yeah, I remember this. I loved this though. It was for Koshi. Koshi's uh, exhibition last year. Right. Hands off our girls, right? Yeah, hands off our girls. Yeah. yeah. So it was interesting. The other, I don't know how many weeks ago it was now, when I had uh, Ebro on our podcast, and we were kind of just talking about building 3D and in the metaverse. You know, Ebro loves his AR VR conversation and that. Uh, so it was really cool. And we were just walking around in earplug spot, and then we went next door here. I believe this is. Um, I don't know if it's Koshi's spot or Christina's spot, um, but yeah, they have all these pieces from the hands off our girls piece. And we were kind of walking around and we both just fell silent looking at this amazing piece that you created here. Um, like a really like just next level oh, surrealist, wow. surrealist art. We were just like, whoa, what, what is that? You know? Um, and I realized after, cause I looked at it that it hasn't sold yet. And I'm just like, definitely interested. I know it's not listed right now and I'm not sure what the status of the hands off our girls campaign is, but I would love to have the opportunity possibly to get this piece. I know it was listed at point one Ethereum, but I would love to know the backstory on it. And yeah, it really literally took our breath away. Like we were in the middle of a conversation and we both just stopped and looked, we were just like, Whoa, what is that? So I would love to hear the story on this really amazing. Um, I think it, it says surrealist to me. Would that qualify as a surrealist piece? Mm, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's because I, I think I just met, um, cause I've been in the NFC space in the clubhouse for a while and I probably just ask questions and listen, ask questions and listen. And one day I was in my room just listening to one of the club rooms and the next thing I heard a lady, oh, there's this guy, this artist, I've been to his place on Instagram. He's an amazing, talented artist. You guys need to check his stuff out. His name is Ice. I'm like, okay, who's talking about me? <laughs> so I picked up my phone and I looked, it was Koshi. So that was when we I met, that was the first time I met her and I, we talked at length. And then I followed her and I think the next week or so, she started talking about hands of our girls. I'm like, hey, anything to help support your stuff, let me know. She, and it's talking about the hand that they want to create an art, NFT art with the hand thing. I was like, okay, hand. She's, sent me a picture, I looked at the picture, I was like, huh, okay. And I listened to the story of what has been happening. And I was like, okay, we, the, 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 the best way, I, the more I thought about it, the more I could hear, hear my spirit hope. Um, and, and then the hand, which is a very important symbol. And I thought about a door, because we always look at, oh, like the end of a tunnel, but I do want to do tunnel, the light at the end of a tunnel. There can be a door at the end of a mist there that gives you hope that ends up telling you keep moving forward. Because sometimes you can be stuck in the middle of nowhere and you don't know if you should go to the left or to the right or go backwards or forward. But if you can see that a light on your left, that's basically a light telling you to come to that place. That's so beautiful. I sort of created different layers and levels of mountains and then the, a, a door at the very end and the door sort of reflects the people that have been walking towards that door. So those that are holding hands in the forefront are literally seen as a hope ahead of them to walk towards. And that's what, for me, that is what I believe life is all about, to keep moving forward. Because sometimes there's um, hope. When, the, when your hope is the heart becomes sick. So uh, but if you know that Sorry, you're I... still there, yeah, yeah, we're here. You did get cut out just a little bit there. Um, yeah, if you could repeat, I, I was getting goosebumps. Just everything you're describing is exactly what comes across in this piece. It's really fascinating. And I love the way that the light shines on the dove and then the dove almost looks like it's shining light down as well. Um, and the hand like, yeah, it's just fascinating. But it does very much say to me a long road traveled to a good destination, you know, like it basically says refugee to me. It says like 
I've traveled through all this very difficult road up hills and mountains. And then, you know, reaching that door is, you know, some safe destination. Um, that's the vibe I get from it. But sorry, yeah, you cut out just yeah, a little bit there. And, and, and the funny part is that the way you described how you felt was the way Koshi described how she felt when I sent it. Because I, when I sent it to her, I, I sent her a message, oh, I've sent my own, uh, my, own, my own art piece to her. So she and her mom um, clicked on the link and her mom was walking into the room. And when she saw it, they were asked, said it, they, they froze for some seconds. And they were like, oh, wow. So when you mentioned that, when you guys saw it, you guys were like, you guys just were, were stunned by it. That yeah. was the same way. I think I actually so clicked it. I clipped it too. I got to go back and find it. Um, and then I'll, I'll share it on Twitter or something. But yeah, it was interesting because we both did have that reaction and I, I love it. And I want to speak briefly to Koshi and the hands off our girls campaign, because this is what the NFT space is all about. Um, it was a very sad and difficult time for the Afghan community. It still is uh, very important to note yeah. to say, um, you know, as we know, the Taliban took back over Afghanistan and meant all kinds of horrible implications for women in that country and um, we were hearing about especially women who were socially active or educationally you know activists trying to help women get access to education among other things um, we're really basically having to deal with violence um, and all kinds of really horrible things that were happening and I believe continue to happen in Afghanistan so Koshi uh, tried to, or did rally the community um, the NFT community yeah. with a campaign called hands off our girls um, I, maybe I'll even open up the rest of this. So hashtag stand up for unity NFTs. And it was really just in, inspiring. Um, and they built out that whole space in the metaverse that I was walking through. And that's where we found your amazing piece. Um, and just giving a brief look at all these other collections. And they all do seem to incorporate the hand or not all of them, but a lot of them incorporate the hand in one way or another. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just fascinating, just the, the power of NFTs. So it's just another example, right, of Web3 actually making a difference, you know. I'm um, sure they're aiming to sell out and maybe they're going to refresh this because there was a big changeover on OpenSea. So they got to relist some of the pieces that haven't sold yet. But you can see they've sold quite a few pieces at 0.1 Ethereum each. Um, and this was going back to last year. So 0.1 Ethereum would have been worth quite a bit more. Um, but yeah, you know, these type of initiatives are really what we love to see um, in the NFT community. It's why, you know, the power of the blockchain is so um, necessary and impactful because it is borderless and it does allow us, you know, and people could make the argument, oh, well, the Internet already had, you know, cash donations across borders and things like that. But the reality is when you look under the hood of those cash donations, there's all kinds of fees, there's all kinds of uh, bank situations that might get complicated and all this type of stuff. Um, but when you get that direct peer to peer transaction, um, and especially when you're actually buying art for it, so you're actually getting an asset um, for the donation. And now these funds are going to a very worthy cause trying to help women um, get out of Afghanistan, and also the women that are stuck in Afghanistan and to get the supports that they require um, in safe places. So kudos to you, Ice, for reaching out and, and taking that initiative and donating this amazing piece that I can't believe hasn't sold yet. <laughs> uh, I want it. <laughs> so uh, kudos to you and just kudos to Koshi and um, all of the others uh, who were building that project. It's really, it really is about, you know, it shows specifically what we're here for and what the uh, blockchain community and the NFT community can really do when we rally together uh, for important causes. But Ebro and I were just walking around the metaverse and stumbled onto your amazing piece of art here in the metaverse. And all I could think is like, damn, I need to try to get that art. <laughs> um, and then we learned like, and then we learned what it was all about. And the fact that the whole art space in the metaverse was all devoted to this hands off our girls campaign, um, which is amazing. But just the fact that that's going to be the future, right? Walking around digital spaces and seeing a piece of art that you genuinely want and being able to actually purchase it directly from that artist. Um, it's just an exciting, yeah. an exciting future to look forward to, right? Yeah, but I think it, it, well, the metaverse breaks breaks all the walls. Um, I was t t telling a friend of mine that it, walls were broken in twin in in the year Corona invaded the earth. <laughs> <laughs> walls of walls of communication, walls of barriers that 
you can probably be somewhere in Africa and somebody in America is actually having a serious um, um, like connection with you beyond your arts that you can talk with the person, the person will buy your works, you can even send the works across. Before, before COVID, that wasn't possible, even though you might have to probably send your art stuff to an art gallery, they have to go to the gallery to probably see the art, but now they can just click on the link, go to the site, see it, or even with the metaverse, um, where they are ocular, go into the space, or without even the ocular on their phone, go into the space, see the art, we're like, oh, I like this, and buy it off, and probably get to even talk with the artist too, without you, um, through Clubhouse or Discord. It was, so it's a whole lot of, of things that we probably feel is difficult to probably achieve is so possible right now before us. So it's, it's, we are living in interesting times. Yeah, and the metaverse is just destroying boundaries, you know. Um, again, I bring up the comparison <laughs> to video games because in some ways video games kind of broke down the boundaries first, you know. Like I met people from all different corners of the world um, in whether it was GTA <laughs> or whether it was like, you know, playing NHL or NBA online or Rocket League, you know, all oh, these wow. different games. They offered that opportunity, but the difference now um, is that I can not just meet people around the world, but actually be able to support them financially and purchase their art from them and sell d digital assets to them. And in the future, you know, some of these gaming spaces, like looking at Grand Theft Auto, there's some rumors Grand Theft Auto 6 might have an actual cryptocurrency tie in where you can actually <laughs> take that money off and actually like have real world assets that, that actually give you value um, in the real world. Now, that is probably just a big rumor, but imagine if that happened, right? Like, imagine the implications it, it will, that would it, happen. It will happen. <laughs> yeah, it eventually. will happen because I, I play a lot of um, football football games on my tablet, and I keep asking myself. I I have about I think over a million that I've made based on like the coins right. in the in the game. But like, this sh there should be a way you can actually play this, and that million is the real million. <laughs> yeah, like you're happy that. So I believe we're going to get. We're so much there. We probably used to see that in films, but I believe it's going to probably be like next to everything that we're doing. Somebody's at home playing games, winning games, and he's actually literally making money out of it. Right. So we are, we, are so, we are so around that corner. Yeah, and it's interesting because people talk about Web3 gaming um, and a lot of the topic goes right into like tokenomics and it gets a lot like muddy and kind of murky when you're trying to like incentivize almost every single aspect of the game and, and tie crypto in but if you look at it like you were just saying right like you're playing fifa or whatever football game you might have and you're having fun with it and accruing points all they have to do is make those points actually like tie to some kind of crypto currency that they've created and now obviously it doesn't have to be like one-to-one -one. it's not going to be a huge amounts of money but to be able to off-ramp yeah. it and get some kind of real world value or to be able to off-ramp it into a wallet that you own sovereign of the game so that whatever happens to the and game that, you and actually, that's going to drive yeah. the sales of the game up right you would think you know you would think so hopefully that's around the corner that, that's another big part of what uh, web3 warriors is focused on that intersection between gaming and blockchain that i really is just barely started honestly at this point there's a lot to be done here uh, so we do have a cool question from sasha here as we wind down um saying okay. hey hey ice what do you think your next project will be or are you already thinking about it focusing on other things i know you had mentioned um samson right and maybe having a, a volume two for the delilah collection but uh well, yeah what do you got cooking up and what's your what's your next project okay uh, yeah the samson um it's not going to come immediately because i don't want to rush it I, I want it to be very, <laughs> what I probably just see is some, I, I'm going to, I'm, tr I want to try out something with the new Samson. So I'm going to merge the new way of my, the new way I want to do art and what I did with the dance series with the Samson. So I'm going to push it. it it's going to be 3D and traditional mm. and digital together. So 3D modeled traditional and digital mixed together. So that's what I want the, the volume two to look like. But my next drop is, um, I, I call it my body of works. Um, and that body of works is going to be everything, like it, about 12 pieces. Um, some will be um, um, animated, some will be still um, images. So 
stuff that I've done in the NFT space. So I'm putting all of that together. So I call it be um, bow. So that so I'll be doing lots of volume of bow, which is um, body of works volume one. I'll be dropping that um, by latest end of this month, first week of um, first week of August. Yeah, that's so something to look forward that, to. Like, so you're calling it body yeah. of work, and just to confirm, you're saying it's going to have kind of that traditional, um, you know, canvas style mixed with the digital. Is that what you say? Yeah, it, it will have a little bit of traditional mix, mixed with the digital, and it will have animations. Um, uh, like one of the, uh, <laughs> yeah, one of the pieces I call it uh, Bitcoin is king. Um, people, <laughs> oh, yeah. are, people are going to people are going to shout or like, oh, Bitcoin is is has dropped or whatever. It, uh, what, what, why are you calling it Bitcoin is king? <laughs> <laughs> but I created that with that mind. Um, Bitcoin is king. So there's a whole lot. Some had to do with the metaverse. Some had to do with the, the, the future of where we are headed to. Um, some had to do with just traditional art, creating stuff. So that's the new one that I'm... Sasha, that's the new one that I'm working on now. So when I'm done with that, I'll move to the next one. I want to populate the, the blockchain with my art. That's awesome. Prolific, prolific NFT artist here. Ice Way K, let's go. Um, yeah, the, this Delilah piece, and maybe you wait and have that as part of the offer once you sell out of the Delilahs, then Samson will be uh, next in line kind of thing. But that's up to your creative yeah. process, however you want to time that out. Um, but yeah, these Delilahs are awesome. And I just think of them, and I don't know if you've thought of this, but these digital... Um, characters that you've created especially the wearables that they're wearing right have you thought around the fashion that you have here and maybe adding some kind of metaverse wearable component because it is they, they each one has a like a fashion statement in many ways have you thought about that it's fashion's huge in, no, the, no, in the metaverse or in, not uh, really. i think i, I have um i was looking into um the metaverse and the wearables and the collectibles yet mm -hmm. but when um diverse mentioned it that I should look into that. I'm planning on doing that. So I'm going to yeah. look into that and see how. Just your um, eye for color, man. Because like when I look, even your canvas pieces, the like the things that people are actually wearing are, are so well done. You know, your attention to color, detail. I think it would all lend itself really well to uh, digital wearables and just fashion in general. Because there's a, there's a big culture right now of people trying to essentially break down the walls between digital fashion and real fashion and, and trying to make them one oh, and wow. the same. Yeah, I mean, obviously, okay. the the limits for digital fashion are boundless, so you can do anything with your clothing in the metaverse, right? But at the same time, they would like to have it so, like, high fashion, you know, like, all of the kind of high fashion, high dollar design designer clothes that you can get, you basically get them, like, one-to-one -one in the metaverse, like, exact replicas. Obviously, you'd have to have a oh, wow. kind of high-fidelity metaverse, maybe, like, Somnium Space, possibly Decentraland's kind of not bad um graphics wise but yeah in the future that's kind of the fashion future that i'm hearing a lot about um in the web3 space but okay. I, yeah so fashion's not quite your your lane there hey <laughs> but uh and not 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 yet yeah, yeah. not yet I, I there's a lot i want to learn um so i've learned to um pace myself so i don't probably get to burn myself out no problem. Um, Talking about burning so, out, your, your light is <laughs> giving you problems. Yes. Right? <laughs> uh, no problem. We can wind down soon, man. Um, I just wanted to say quickly, you know, how has blockchain kind of changed your life? I think you talked about the fact that there was these issues you were having with galleries. Um, and that's something that's been a recurring theme here on Web3 Warriors with different artists. Um, so obviously that's a big change, just not having to care about what galleries are trying to get you to do. But in general, you know, how is blockchain bettered your life and maybe i can just tie in my final question with that and you know what would you say to people who are kind of skeptical you know there's a lot of uh fud out there a lot of misinformation so you know what do you say to those people and maybe you can use your own um you know life trajectory to kind of make that point um one i i always go back to um, the beginning of everything i always tell myself that um because i probably studied visual arts I did a bit, I've done a bit of a background study on um, the history of art in general, how art started, and mm -hmm. from the, the different um, um, ages of art, the Renaissance, the Baroque arts, the, 
the modern arts, the cubism and all of those eras and all of those ages, they all were the build up to the to the to the noun that we are in. And each time, each of the age, if when they, there's a new age, there's always a battle and there's always um the the passing age always complains about the new age being a, an inferior or a wrong thing to do. <laughs> but it's always like that from one age to the other. So if you keep studying, you find out that do this Renaissance had an issue with the the Barack era, had an, this, had an issue with this, had an issue with that modern era when J Jackson Pollock came up into the art scene and would spread the canvas on the floor and just splash paints all over it and sign on it. And people were like, is that art now? And all, all those eras were just building up to today. Mm. It, it, it pushed us into the modern, into the, the, the computer. So the computer age came in and people were still, still doing the traditional because mostly computer design artists don't make much money except if you are maybe a max um a max painting that you got you get a um a gig for a vfx in a film or maybe you're designing stuff for a brand or a company or a logo and all of that right. so not the way it is now in the blockchain so mostly traditional artists are the ones that were selling out doing art exhibitions everywhere they want to go to the gallery to see this art or that art and everything and mostly if you go to most museums they don't have digital stuff installed they have more of the modern or the the renaissance paintings hanging like i've been to the louvre museum in paris and wow. i i saw like life-size oversized art pieces that were painted about so many years ago and i was like oh wow this is what people painted with their hands mm. And but that era has passed. The museum just stores it for you to remember there was a time like that. But the time that we're in now is a time that everything is evolving. And as much as traditional is still consistent with time, but the traditional artists, which I still tell my friends that as much as you still want to do traditional, the, the world is changing. So the best thing you can do to yourself is to evolve with the arts because the, the digital space still needs your skill sets as an artist, whether you choose to probably still remain um, on the traditional space and still take a picture of your art and sell and attach the the physical physical piece to it, you still need to evolve into that space because art is moving. Art, art is not static. That's Same right. thing as the blockchain. The blockchain is here forever because um, back then when I was little, there, and I've heard news about what, what is called trade by butter. Trade by butter is what people... You, use as an e-commerce you probably get i give you my shoe you give me your shirt because i want your shirt so I, I have to trade something to get that stuff mm -hmm. if you look at it a bit nft is almost like that and we're not giving you and that was when the, the there was something like centralized currency and so everything was decentralized back then mm -hmm. so you, you can't you can't calculate what somebody earns because the person basically used a particular furniture he, he or she has to make an exchange for what they need but when they introduce the currency and the coins and everything, that's when they centralize e-commerce. So you can actually calculate how much people make and what the transaction or where the money went to. You can all trace that through the banking system. Right. But the, the where tree space and where we are in now is going back. So we're in a full circle where everything is breaking down. There's where there, we're all talking about decentralization, whereby you can actually control okay, this is how much this person has or this and that. So the blockchain gives you the room to actually buy things and trade with other things that you have. Like you're not giving me uh, a dollar, but you're giving me a dollar worth of it to have my art. And you're not, sometimes you don't have the physical art, you have a, a, a picture of the art, but because of the, the, the way the blockchain is built, you are the only one that has the original digital copy of that stuff. So you're the original owner of that piece. Except if it's a multiple collection, but your collection one is yours, and you're the only one that has it. So for right. me, it's the, the the digital space is the future. So running away from the future is like seeing a bus or a train that is going to take you to Japan, and you say that you want to use the bicycle to get there. <laughs> you get there, but you get there like when you get to Japan, you probably need to go into the hospital because your legs will be gone. <laughs> But the, your, your, your mates and your colleagues that took the plane to Japan are already there, chilling, having fun, right. experiencing life and experiencing what the future is. So the future for me is digital. 
and it's not going to go back to being analog no, no. that's like saying that's analog. like saying we'd go back to the days before the internet you know like it would have to be a downfall of yes. civilization for something like that to happen <laughs> exactly to get with man and and this is what i always say is man is constantly evolving man is constantly trying to push the boundaries of how to live on earth and make it a more better place we're thinking about going to mars people are thinking about having hotels outside of the earth because that is how man is built to actually push the boundaries right and so it's very it's so so impossible for after having a taste of what the digital space can be and then you want to go back to an industrial age it's impible who yeah. how can that it can't even happen like so you're, the only you're thing fighting I the universe artists, at that point yeah <laughs> just embrace it like embrace the future the future is now the future is tech the future is is the future is digital That's so just it. embrace it uh, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, uh, Ice Way K. It's been really inspiring. A lot of really heavy, um, awesome, awesome gems that you've dropped here today. Uh, I want to thank you. I want everybody to go check out the Lila Volume One on OpenSea. Um, you can follow Ice at Ice Way K on Twitter. That's Ice N W E K E on Twitter. Um, definitely check him out, retweet his collections. It's really amazing. Um, I did want to just mention, I think you spoke to it briefly, um, but when you're looking at this Web3 potential and the fact that digital is the future, as you just said, um, how are you feeling about, I know Nigeria's got like elections and stuff going on, but in general, you know, I see a lot of amazing, inspiring Nigerian artists coming out of the space. Is this something you're really um, confident and excited about and you think it's just going to continue to grow exponentially from here or are there concerns you have there i just wanted to quickly ask you that yeah it's it, it's gonna keep growing um, but my fear is um a bit of my fear a bit of my worry is um clubhouse and the nft space and everything got um really walk got really crowded during the covid because nobody was going because of the restrictions and um and staying at home stuff so everybody was closer to their computer now the world is opening up opening up um, a whole lot of people are not no longer so active in those spaces but one thing i know for sure is the the nft space the art space the digital space has been born and a lot of artists are going to take it into every space that they are in i have an exhibition in lagos by the end of this month is a is a digital exhibition uh, but well so is we're, we're using an, an art gallery and the story we we're telling is about the what is happening in my country and the election. So I, ha I have about five pieces that I'm exhibiting um, about the crazy things that's been happening, um, the crimes, the corruption, um, the election, the full scarcity. There's, so I have collections of stuff that I've already done. I'm just waiting wow. for um, this, to finish up a few adjustments to it, then I send it out. So it's still, artists are coming into the space, but and some of them are getting to know about the NFT, and but, but now there are, there are no there are not enough <laughs> rooms as it was before that is on, that that does onboarding for people to understand. Hey, right, you so can bring them over to the to. dream conduit, Ice. You know that. Yeah. Come on. So yeah, I know that. Yeah. So <laughs> what we're doing now is just try to get them. Um, so I think I was talking with one of them on Thursday. He was so he he met he made mention that a friend of mine told him about me. So he. So while we're talking, I mentioned, oh, NFT. We're like, oh, yes, he heard about NFT. We're like, okay. So this is my contact. We'll get to probably talk over the weekend. Nice. And so I can bring you into where. So anybody I meet, come into this place. I mean, there's this room that I'm in, which is the dream conduit. Come in there. If just, once you follow me, you'll see the room. Come in there and you get Love to it. learn. Don't even, you, you can choose to ask questions. But first of all, come and just listen. That's it. You will hear a whole lot of things. And with that, you will know. Yeah, you'll know the direction to go, right? Sorry, you cut out a little bit. Yeah, there. yeah, no, it's exciting, man. And uh, thank you. That's awesome. I look forward to seeing more Nigerian artists coming through the dream conduit. And, and that's what it is. There's not much. It takes a little bit of time. But um, the coolest thing about the community, like you've said, uh, multiple times, ice, it's like a family. Um, if you plug in the right space, you know, I'm not gonna yeah. promise I'm not gonna promise that every NFT corner, <laughs> every every corner of Web three is gonna feel <laughs> that that welcoming. It's not gonna you know? be no, <laughs> no, not every corner. Yeah, but but I, I can... love the reason why I love um, Dream Conduit. Mm. It's a home. Love it. Um, and that's one of, and that's part of, part of the 
that's one of the reasons. Ra Rami was one of the guys that encouraged me to bring it, come into the space more. Um, and and part of that was why I even said that the giveaways that I was giving for the Delilah, um, I know people were saying, are you crazy? Right. This amount of work you are giving out, like almost, I think I've given out about, was it 17 It must 18? be a lot, yeah. You, you gave out quite a few. And, and but like, helped. are you, are yeah. you for real? But like, <laughs> the, the, the community that I am in, is a community that is built on love and love is given if you don't if you don't love you can't give and you can't give without loving so and it's not about having the money and you don't have people to spend it with so you can you have go. people that you're with and you guys care about each other it's much more than having the whole money on earth and you don't have people to spend it with so mine is to, to give off that the ones that i want so people can just have the when I heard a guy say, oh, I've never had an NFT before. I've never won an NFT um, art before. And that me, for me was like, uh, like pen eat for me. Like somebody <laughs> that's has amazing, never man. won it and he has it now. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Wow. So you're onboarding people with, uh, with your giveaways as well. So that, there you go. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, that's just so inspiring. I, I love what you're saying, you know, because you do put a lot of work into these. Obviously, they're they're amazing. Like I said, I think they're each an individual fashion piece as well. I'm looking at these little eye goggles you got on some of them. Like that could be a piece on Decentraland. Easy. People probably pay good money to be able to wear that in the metaverse. <laughs> um, but yeah, just oh, really, wow. really well I have done, to man. Get to the metaverse, yeah, then. you got to get into the metaverse. <laughs> I'm telling you, use that Cinema 4D action or uh, probably Unity. I think you'd have to probably use. Anyway, look into it. It. keep us posted we would love okay. to have you back uh ice it's been really really amazing um you dropped so many gems and it's clear that you're in the space for the right reasons you know you're really out here building creating being generous with the community giving out amazing art pieces onboarding people sending them their first nft ever and it's one of these beautiful delilah pieces like that's pretty amazing um so kudos to you man um we look forward to keeping tabs on your uh, career in the nft space and we'd love to have you back on web3 warriors i know it's getting late for you i want to let you get some sleep over there <laughs> thanks a lot thanks a lot hey thanks ice any final words before we wrap up uh, just keep cre keep creating, keep being, keep being you. Um, there's no need to be somebody else because somebody else. Um, I learned something that um, whatever you create will live after you, but whatever you copy won't do that. Um, I I, so I, sh I I better leave me when I leave the earth than leaving a copy of somebody else's work, and I don't have anything that can, people can say this is what he did. Damn, um, that's, so that's, that's beautiful. That's that's what I can probably tell anybody. Whether you're a creator, whether you're a collector, we are all creators. Even if we don't create physically, but we're all creators. There you go. We're all creators. Be you. Be authentic. Be genuine. Be intentional in this space, um, and it'll come back to you. You know, and we're leaving legacies. That's the other part of the blockchain. You know, it's all immutable. It's all going to outlive all yeah. of us. So it's a beautiful thing to think about. And Ice, you clearly are doing this for the right reason. You're you're building in the right direction. Um, yeah, it was like a proverb. I agree, Sasha. Thanks for all your gems, uh, Ice and Sasha. Thanks for engaging in the chat. Uh, but thank you, Ice, so much. Uh, we're going to have the podcast live You're later welcome. tonight. We'll have the video live by tomorrow. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to continuing these conversations. Um, season two of Web3 Warriors. That's it. We'll be back next Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll keep rolling through these episodes. Thank you again, Ice. Um, until next time, thank you. we'll catch you all in the metaverse. Peace out. Bye.